Ladies and gentlemen, this story is coming from one of my favorite places, which is New Orleans. Beautiful, beautiful city, great food. But there have been just a handful of stories that keep coming out of here that involve our children being misused and abused. And this story is definitely going to be gut-wrenching. I got a little bit of audio that I want you guys to hear that also might be visually disturbing. So I need to make sure and give you guys a very clear disclaimer. And let me say it again, that the visual might be a little bit disturbing for you of this mother who was recording herself talking about something that she's claiming to have done to her kid. That's part of the screenshot right there. And I think she is actually under arrest now, if I'm not mistaken. But also the words might really jar your soul. So that is your official disclaimer if you guys need to exit the video. But let me be more official with it. Where is it at? Where is it at? Some viewers might find my content controversial or offensive. The information is coming from many different sources, including court records, official police charges, and news websites. This video commentary also contains my personal opinion about the facts of this story. The point is, is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing these tragedies to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised, and that is your official disclaimer. And again, fair warning, when, you sh when I show the video, you might want to make sure that, you know, if your children or whoever is watching can't handle it, or if you can't handle it, you've already been forewarned. Now, out of Louisiana, New Orleans, y'all are having to take the L today. A four-year-old Louisiana girl died, and a two-year-old boy was left critically injured Saturday, or excuse me, Sunday, left critically injured Sunday after they were stabbed by a distraught woman at their home in, a, in the Florida neighborhood, New Orleans police say. And I'm getting this information from illicitdeeds.com. So thank you for the article. Make sure and check out illicitdeeds at illicitdeeds.com. Detectives booked 31-year-old Janae Pest, let me see, Pedesclau. Her name, last name is spelled P-E-D-E-S-C-L-E-A-U-X. I'm sure I probably didn't pronounce that correctly. So sorry to my NOLA people out there. I can't pronounce that last name properly at all. But that's this. Oh, she cried. She cried. She's a freaking loser. Thank you. Whoever said that. She is a loser. Horrible individual. Should have never been a parent. Janae, 31-year-old. Pedesclau charged with second degree murder, attempted second degree murder and second degree cruelty to a juvenile in connection with a double stabbing, which was reported at 1117 a.m. at a home in the 3100 block of Law Street. Beautiful little kids, too, man. Let me show you all their pictures. Beautiful, beautiful babies, man. And I don't, like I said, I don't understand how you can look at these babies, look into their eyes and just let the devil take over you and you just do something like this. There is absolutely no excuse for hurting our children. I think if anybody hurts our children, they need a life sentence. How about that? No sympathy, no mental illness as an excuse. Get a lighter sentence. I don't believe in none of that. I think if you hurt our kids, you don't need to be in our society anymore. All right. Now, police did not immediately confirm reports from neighbors that Pedes Clow, I cannot say her name, Janae, the mother was the children's mother. They didn't immediately confirm that this, this was the mother, but I think it is. Instead, NOPD said the preliminary investigation indicates that this incident is guardian in nature. I think she was the mother. Surveillance video obtained by Fox 8 showed a man believed to be the children's father arriving to the scene in a white pickup truck and running toward the house. Minutes later, the same man is seen rushing back to the truck with the injured toddlers with the older siblings stumbling and falling to the sidewalk before getting up to run again. In a more disturbing video, since deleted from Janae, the mother's Instagram page, but saved by illicit deeds, the woman faces the camera in a blood-stained tank top, sobbing, I'm dying. My children is dead. I'm dying. I'm done with life. 
Please let me know that y'all understand that that is the video that I'm about to show. I want to make sure that everybody understands that's what you're going to see and that's what you're going to hear. It's a short video, but I still want to make sure that there's no excuse for anybody to turn around and flag my video and say that you didn't know that you didn't get warned because you did way ahead of time. Now, neighbors who did not wish to be named said it was on social media. It was on a social media post that alerted the father that his children were in grave danger and or injured. When he arrived to the slightly elevated house, the man broke and climbed through a front window to rescue the children, taking them to the hospital for treatment himself. Police say that the girl died at the hospital and that her younger brother was listed in critical conditions. Please put a prayer hands up in the chat and I hope he survives. I hope I don't get an update that he took a turn for the worse. I really, really hope that he survives. A witness said that Janae Pes Pedescloud, the mother, was arrested at the scene and taken away, strapped to an ambulance gurney. The NOPD said that she was booked into the, new, uh, the, uh, the Orleans Justice Center later Sunday. NOPD child abuse detective Mario Bravo is heading the investigation, and anybody who has information on this incident is asked to contact Spectral, Spectral. Asked to contact Special Victim Section at 504-658-5267 or Crime Stoppers at 504-822-1111. If you see something, say something. We give you guys the fair usage. You've already been given a fair warning. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. I always think it's a wild thing how these people claim to be going through whatever emotional episode they're going through. But they always find a way to hurt the kids, but can never hurt themselves first so they don't get an opportunity to hurt the kids. Guys have been warned. Here we go. Let's get it. My children is dead. I'm done. I'm done with life. And it's all Jermaine's fault. It's always Jermaine's fault. I'm done. I'm killing myself. I'm done. My children is dead. I'm done! I'm done with life! And it's all Jermaine's fault! It's always Jermaine's fault! I'm done! I'm killing myself! I'm done! My children is dead! I'm done! I'm done with life! And it's all Jermaine's fault! It's always Jermaine's fault! I'm done! I'm killing myself! I'm done! And that is just the worst shit ever. That she cares so little about her children that she's already tried to come up with a defense and an excuse by saying it's Jermaine's fault. That you committed a murderous act against your children. Thinking about protecting yourself, thinking about that the blame doesn't fall on you, how society is going to view you. Somebody else caused you to feel that way about your children. I want y'all to think about that for a moment. If y'all think about the uh, the Francois Little John uh, man out of Oklahoma City who murdered all three of his children because he was put through something emotional. Think about how similar those two situations are. If we're going to look at that and say that he doesn't deserve any sympathy of what he did to those children, that he deserves, you know, like even though he, he took his own life, but, but there is no excuse for what he did, then why would we give an excuse for her? Saying somebody else put you through something emotionally and you took it out on your kids. And, that, and if we're going to play the equality game in, the, in, in this world and in this society, then we have to look at these two things the same and say, ma'am, I don't give a damn what you were going through. You need life in prison for what you did. Need to be punished fully for what you did. And there is no excuse, no mental excuse 
to hurt and murder and abuse your children. My children is dead. I'm done. I'm done with life. And it's all Jermaine's fault. It's always Jermaine's fault. I'm done. I'm killing myself. I'm done. Good evening and thanks for joining us on the Eyewitness News at 10. I'm Mike McDaniel. We begin with a developing story tonight in the Desire area of New Orleans. A four-year-old girl is dead and her two-year-old brother in critical condition after they were both stabbed. And tonight, New Orleans police say their mom is responsible. Charged with second-degree murder, attempted murder, and second-degree cruelty to a juvenile, New Orleans police say 31-year-old Janae Pedesclo stabbed her own kids, killing one of them. Police were called to a home in the 3100 block of Law Street around 11 o'clock Sunday morning. When they got there, they say they were told two siblings, a two-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl, were stabbed and taken to the hospital. The girl later died. The boy is in critical condition. Moments after allegedly stabbing her kids, a woman believed to be Podesclo posted a short video on Instagram with blood dripping down her chest. In the now deleted video, she says, quote, I'm done. My children are dead. I'm done. I'm done with life. She also says, it's all Jermaine's fault. According to our partners at NOLA.com, court records show Podesclo and the children's father, Jermaine Roberts, were in a custody battle. Roberts even sued Podesclo for visitation rights, claiming she was not stable or providing a healthy environment for the kids. They were in a what? Another custody battle. Let's hear that again. So says, it's all Jermaine's fault. According to our partners at NOLA.com, court records show Podesclo and the children's father, Jermaine Roberts, were in a custody battle. Court records show Podesclo and the children's father, Jermaine Roberts, were in a custody battle. Podesclo and the children's father, Jermaine Roberts, were in a custody battle. Let me tell y'all this. I also find it ironic. And when we're talking about protecting the innocent parties, and in this case, that would be the biological father. Not only did she put his name out there, why did the news turn around and put his full name out there when they won't usually do that to the mothers if the father or boyfriend does something and murders a kid? Why would they put his whole name out there unless he asked for them to do that? I just think that's a little bit odd, a little bit weird, regardless of whatever they were going through. He's technically the innocent party here. He felt like it was a danger to his children for her to be around them and they're having a custody dispute. You ought to be able to handle that in, in at least some type of a fashion that doesn't put the children at risk. But again, that's why I say maybe there needs to be a provision that comes into play where I feel like my children are in danger and I'm just going to take them and not bring them around you until we get this custody dispute handled. Maybe that might save some of these children because what else do you do? If you prevent the, the mother from seeing her kids, then you could get caught with kidnapping. According to our partners at NOLA.com, court records show Podesclo and the children's father, Jermaine Roberts, were in a custody battle. Roberts even sued Podesclo for visitation rights, claiming she was not stable or providing a healthy environment for the kids. There's a mix of sadness and hurt with the loss of yet another young child in New Orleans. Someone left a stuffed animal and balloons on the stairs in front of a home in the 3100 block of Law Street. According to the NOPD, a woman was arrested here on Sunday for allegedly stabbing her two children, a four year old daughter and a two year old son. The young girl did not survive that attack and the children's father reportedly hurried to that scene after seeing a disturbing social media post by the mother, 31 year old Janae Pettisclo. She said in a bloodstained shirt, quote, my children are dead. I'm done. I'm done with life. The father, Jermaine Rogers, had to break through a front window to get the kids and rush them to the hospital. Reverend Johnny RV is the pastor of the Law Street Missionary Baptist Church just down the street from the mother's home. It hurts. It's, it's sad. You know, I feel for the children, the father and even the mother. Uh, I really feel bad for her. The two year old boy is still alive tonight and he is still in the hospital with serious injuries. Tonight, Erica Ferrando is following the story. It's just heartbreaking one, and she's joining us live on Law Street where police say that attack happened. Erica, what's the latest? 
That's right, Katie. The stabbings happened in the house behind me, and you can see those balloons and stuffed animals still sitting outside the front door. But according to court records, the father of those two children expressed concern for their safety months ago. A devastated uncle shared these photos of his beloved two-year-old nephew Jason and his four-year-old niece Paris. This old photo is one he now treasures more than ever, as Paris died after the sibling's mother allegedly stabbed them. A makeshift memorial now sits outside the Law Street home where it happened around 11 Sunday morning. While Paris died at the hospital, Jason was taken to a hospital in critical condition and is recovering. An OPD arrested the children's mother, 31-year-old Janae Podesclo, for the crime. Moments after the stabbing, a woman that appears to be Podesclo shared a video on Instagram with blood dripping down her chest. We're not sharing the graphic video, but in it you can hear the woman say, My children is dead, I'm done, I'm done with life, and it's all Jermaine's fault. According to court records, Jermaine Roberts is the kid's father, and in April he filed a petition seeking sole custody of the two kids that would have allowed the mother weekend visitation rights. He claimed Podesclo didn't let him see the children since he was in a relationship. He said in the petition, quote, she's not stable or providing a healthy environment for the kids. All over another woman. Ain't that a bitch? So in my estimation, which I think makes it even worse because now we know the motive. That she killed the kids to hurt him because he moved on and was in a relationship with another woman. That is the epitome of a selfish person. All emotional, thought nothing of her children, and was mad because he had another girlfriend and was moving on from her and wanted to take her anger out on him and hurt the one thing that he loved was those children. And she didn't love them, clearly. Clearly, she didn't love her kids. How do you love your kids if you kill them? You don't. Don't even bother making an excuse for that. He added, the mother takes non-prescription pills. She drinks and drives under the influence. Podesclo was set to appear in court for the custody battle in 10. Oh, look at her. Oh, she's crying, y'all. Now you see the tears flowing. Now that she's going to have to suffer in prison for what she did. Do you think she cried? The fact that she murdered her children? No, she didn't. She made this this video to try to get sympathy on Instagram went on Instagram live to get sympathy. So somebody feels sorry for her and maybe get her out of the hot water that she put her own self in and the death that she, she put her own children through. Keep that, keep that other child in your prayers. I really hope he pulls through, but that is such a devastating thing to have stab wounds and puncture wounds man that's a hard thing even for adults to live through is in a relationship he said in the petition quote she's not stable or providing a healthy environment for the kids he added the mother takes non-prescription pills she drinks and drives under the influence Podesclo was set to appear in court for the custody battle in 10 days court records for a Janae Podesclo show a criminal history including several arrests just over a decade ago for attempted simple robbery drug charges including using a fake prescription to get drugs aggravated assault and last year she faced criminal damage to property charges let's back that up like a u-haul truck hold on in 10 days court records for a let's look at this. 2009 2019-2021-22 those children don't look like teenagers do they let me show y'all something real quick can we get a hashtag Babies for background checks or something. I don't know how I want to call that as a, as a hashtag yet. Do background. I don't know. Maybe y'all can help me with that. Do background checks for your babies or something. But let me show y'all a picture really quick that you've already seen. But I want to bring this up again. Show y'all this. Here's what I figured out real quick. Just by looking at her arrest history, do these children look like they're any older 
than teenagers. I think they actually gave the age of the kids. Let me see if I can find it again. I think he listed these, gave me the age, two years old and four years old. The oldest is four, 21, 20, 19, 18, 2018. So look at this. These children are four and two. Why do I bring that up? Because when you look at this, that means she had a history of being an unstable, uncouth, non-law-abiding citizen. Unstable, uncouth, non-law-abiding citizen, at least since 2009, and has a history. Let's go through it. 2009 to 2010. Criminal history, including several arrests just over a decade ago for attempted simple robbery, drug charges, including using a fake prescription to get drugs, aggravated assault, and last year she faced criminal damage to property charges. And the biological father could have done a background check. Remember how I always tell these women, whenever you bring in these men into your life, you better do a background check way before you ever decide to bring them around your kids, at least look at it to find out what's on their rap sheet, if there's anything there. It's not always a, a, you know, a, a determining factor, but it does give you a great idea as the person that you're dealing with. I always say that. So if I apply to the women, we damn sure can apply it to the men. If dad did his due diligence and did a background check, then he might have found out that maybe that's not the type of chick that you want to have kids by, especially when you get to custody court. And now you're complaining, saying, well, she takes prescription pills and she's doing all this ratchet behavior and illicit activity. No pun intended. But you would have known that if you did what? Oh, that's right. The same thing that DJ just been, Jay been screaming about for the past four, almost five years, background checks. And you would have known that all of this crap was on her record prior to those kids being born. That would have been 2018. And I'm sure there was some time in between 2011 and 2018 where there was some, some, some behavior that she was exemplifying that wouldn't be indicative of somebody you want to have kids by, right? Let's keep going. And now for allegedly stabbing her children, killing one, Podesclo faces charges of second-degree murder, attempted murder, and second-degree cruelty to a juvenile. A tragedy the children's uncle says he wishes he could have saved them from. Beautiful, beautiful children. Beautiful little baby. First at 10, a four-year-old is dead and a two-year-old is in critical condition after being stabbed in the 3100 block of Law Street Sunday morning. 31-year-old Jenny Pettisclo is accused of those stabbings and is facing murder and other charges. WDSU's Eli Brand spoke with a pastor of a church right next door to where those stabbings happened. Joins us live now from NOPD headquarters with more on what you've learned on this investigation. Eli? Yeah, well, the investigation still ongoing here at NOPD. They do say that the investigation is guardian related in nature. They have not confirmed whether or not that woman arrested was the mother of these two children. But that pastor we spoke to said it's unthinkable for this to have happened in his community. It's sad. Uh, concerned about the mental illness in our community in our city. Johnny RV has been the pastor here at Law Street Baptist Church for 26 years. He says something like this is a sign that his city is in need of help. I did give my car to a family member so they could call me, uh, but that's just about all I could do and pray for the family and I pray for this community because we have a good community here uh, just in this block that I know of. Very good community. Dr. Rochelle Head Dunham is the medical director for Metropolitan Human Services District. She says there was clearly a mental health issue involved here. Clearly a pervasive sense of hopelessness is somewhere in the mix here in order to shut off the life of a child who hasn't had a chance to even learn how to crawl, uh, not, men, not to mention walk through this life. Dr. Head Dunham says help is crucial for people with violent thoughts or tendencies. It's not the people who are getting help that are dangerous to others. It's people who often don't even identify that they have 
uh, issues. And some of these things are really done uh, so impulsively that, and, and under the influence of substances that uh, it wasn't, in some cases, it's not even premeditated. And so it's very difficult to get in front of this um, without having prevention as a major component of how we approach these things. For RV, he says all that can be done now is to ask for help. We just got to keep praying and see what what is it that we can do. Uh, that's that's really all I have to say. Okay, so let me disagree with the doctor, the medical expert. It is premeditated. Let me tell you why. Because she knows what drugs do. She knows she's been addicted to drugs for a while. She knows what it means to have sex. She knows the consequence of having sex. That is that you create children. She knows that you have to be a responsible parent in order to not only birth children, but to raise them and protect them. She knows what it means to be in a relationship with a man. She knows how to have a house. She knows how to have a car. She knows how to have a job, which takes, you know, awareness and cognizance, right? She knows that her ex-boyfriend didn't want to be with her no more. She knows that her baby daddy didn't and left her silly ass, right? She knows that they were going to court for custody. Did she not know this? Oh, she wasn't aware of this, right? And she also knows why she got mad. A, being the fact that she had to go to custody court and knowing that she's such a shitty person that she was going to lose custody. And on top of that, knowing that this man already had some other pussy that he was laying up in. And knowing that she wasn't going to get that man anymore. And she felt hopeless. And she decided, you know what? I'm going to take it out on the kids. She didn't take it out on herself. When you feel despair and hurt and lost. In a lot of cases, those people who feel like it's the end of the world for them might hurt themselves. A person who is consciously aware that they want to inflict emotional pain on the person that helped them create those children is a person that is quite aware of what the fuck they're doing. That's premeditated. Do y'all like the way I broke that down? Need to get rid of this bullcrap excuse of mental illness. When you hurt, murder, and abuse children. You want to throw mental illness out there. After they kill some kids, but you don't want to throw mental mental illness out there before these people start getting in these relationships and and and, and having sex. We want to we don't want to deal with it beforehand, but we want to talk about it after the fact. And I think that's bull crap. I think that's the wrong way to go about this. So in all actuality, a life sentence is what she deserves, and I'm. Definitely sorry that not only did they drop the biological father's full name out there for no freaking reason, which made absolutely no sense. But for the pain that he went through and tried to save his kids and he did it the right way to try to get them by way of custody and family court. That's all he could have did. What else could he have done legally that wouldn't have landed him in, in jail? Really, really sucks. Beautiful children. They deserve so much better from biological mother and biological father, man. To that, to that little girl, the four-year-old, RIP, to the boy who sounds like he's probably going to make a recovery, please put a prayer hands up, a prayer hands up and keep those children in your prayers. Beautiful, beautiful children, man. Keep them in your prayers. Thank you. But leave a comment in the comment section. If I said something incorrect, inaccurate, let me know based on the facts what I said if it was wrong. But let me know what you guys think. Thank you.